Hey, this is Writer's Row. I'm DC Wrighthammer, and I brought on a very special guest for this episode. I'll let him introduce himself. Hey, this is Drew Melbourne. I'm the author of Percival Gint and the Conspiracy of Days and other science fiction and fantasy nonsense. I have a copy of my book. It's here. Boom. They, there will be a link in the description down below to pick that up on Amazon. And I brought Drew onto this episode to talk about... This guy, George R. R. Martin. So he wrote a series of books. In, did he? Uh, I thought he did. It's been a while. Um, but oh, he wrote the five books. And uh, I've actually read them. I can, you know, I, I slogged through it to say, you know, to have that, oh, I've read the books. They're much better. I can do that. Um, but I got to the end of book five. Um, and just, you know, the proof, just, just to brag, just to show them off, <laughs> got through all the books and, you know, they're great writing as everybody, you know, you know, most people know, uh, but you get to the end and there's this void and we were talking before the show and the void is so much me being a writer that I started writing fantasy just to like, you know, kind of fill that void. And, uh, it's no, uh, secret that George R. R. Martin uh, gets a lot of attention because he hasn't finished this book, this series, this book series. Uh, the last one came out in 2011, uh, and nothing has happened since then uh, in terms of finishing books. He keeps talking about releasing the next. There's two books that are supposed to come out in the series, um, but he hasn't. And so people have opinions on this, uh, and some are very passionate. So I wanted to bring Drew on to talk through this. Um, you know, especially for independent authors that start series and life and other things get in the way. What what do authors owe us? What does George R. R. Martin owe us in terms of finishing his series? Uh, yeah, I mean, I am uh, not usually a fantasy reader. And uh, it's interesting because I grew up playing Dungeons and Dragons. I have like a wide range of nerdy pursuits. And I, I always had sort of segmented off like for uh fiction i tended to be more of a sci-fi guy maybe like some modern fantasy whatever but uh the song of ice and fire is really sort of my the my big jump into uh like big sort of modern uh fantasy epic uh fantasy. Of, yeah epic fantasy of that of that sort and sure. um and I, I definitely came in through the the tv show um i i watched the first season and i was like you know what i don't want spoilers i'm just gonna watch the tv show and i'll go back and read the books and then i got through and i was like well you know it's taking a while for the second season and so i burned through all of the books in oh. uh, three four months whatever that was uh and uh yeah i mean so so i like the tv series i really appreciate the books and uh and i like you i felt a little bit um frustrated uh, when it just sort of ended. Um, it's it's funny, because um, 2011 is around the same time I was playing, uh, I don't know if you're a video game guy, uh, Skyrim, mm -hmm. uh, in the Elder Scrolls series, which is yep. another series that, like, you know, it came out, and then I was like, this is great. Uh, you know, I can catch up on all the old stuff, and then when's the next video game coming out? And the answer to that is, like, 2026. So, <laughs> uh, if you like fantasy, 2026 is going to be a good year for you. That's my prediction. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I, I think, I think the real question is like, what is this guy's deal? Like, what is wrong with him? And should we fight him? Do you, do you think we should fight him? That's what I want to know. Yeah, well, as someone who has two books in a series and I haven't finished my series, um, you know, I think you, you have to look at both sides, right? Sure. Because you, you're setting up somewhat of an unofficial sort of non nonverbal contract, or maybe it is a verbal contract. Like, you know, he did say he was going to publish these books eventually. Yeah. And... He's been saying that for like eight years, like nine years, like two years after the other book came out, like, oh, we're going to have this other this follow up. We're going to wrap up the series. It's going to be great. And if you look at another long running, which I haven't read, but Wheel of Time, yeah. you know, that didn't finish before the author passed away. And so people are feeling like, you know, George R. R. Martin's not young anymore. He's in his 70s. And 
there's a possibility that he doesn't end up finishing this. And then now we're going to get his work and there might be like another author who tries to finish the series. And that always, that, that, that I haven't seen it work well. Um, the only real example I have is Michael Crichton. Um, you know, he wrote part of this book micro and then another author came and finished it. I can't even remember his name, but that book was not great. Um, yeah. And it, you can almost tell when when Crichton stopped writing one part of it and didn't finish it, and you could feel when this other author was like putting his foot in that, and that's totally fine. Like all authors have their own way of doing things, sure. Um, but so many have come to know and love the way George R. R. Martin wrote *A Song of Ice and Fire*. Um, we want more of it. We've been begging more of it. We're more than a decade later, and we don't have it, and so. Um, you know, it, it does feel like we're owed something and I, I'm just recently in this, I just read yeah. the books this year. Um, and so somebody who read it when it was released and then the, ser the, the TV series comes out that had an opportunity to fill that void Yeah, and it didn't, <laughs> um, at least not the end in my opinion, the last three seasons, two seasons at the very least were not satisfactory. Um, but, you know, uh, it, it does feel like we're owed something at the same time, being an author, life gets in the way. Yeah. I, and that, I think for me, that's the thing, right? So I, I think about, as somebody who also has uh, some books that uh, I have been, uh, people have been asking for. Uh, so uh, so my, my first book uh, literally ends with... Uh, uh, you know, an old Percival Gint will return in. Your background blur is is working. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. It's uh, no spoilers, right? So I blurred it out. Very special technology that I have here. Um, yeah, but uh, uh, so so uh, so I end not on a cliffhanger, but on like literally like, hey, this is what the next book is going to be. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I have not, I have not finished those books yet. Um, and so, so part of me, part of me feels like, uh, if I knew why George R.R. R. Martin wasn't finished with the next book, I might feel better about it, right? Like if it was, if it was like an author, um, justification that like I myself would, uh, would relate to, then, mm -hmm. then it would be okay. And, uh, and then part of me, I think, has the same thought that uh, probably every Game of Thrones fanboy has, which is that, like, oh, he's just rich now and he doesn't care. Uh, uh, I will say uh, he's rich now and he doesn't care is not the reason that I have not finished the, the next book in the series, my series. Yeah, me neither. Um, and, and, you know, uh, I, I mean, we should probably go through the permutations, right? What if he just yeah. never finishes it? What if he just, he doesn't finish it? And I have heard uh, that, uh, so so one of the writers of the Expanse series used to be his assistant. And uh, I, I my understanding is that like when he was working for George R.R. R. Martin, he wasn't really helping him with his writing. He was doing like IT stuff mostly and just kind of like businessy stuff. But people nonetheless ask him, they're like, well, you know, George R.R. Martin's guys, will you, you know, finish the series for him? And he's like, and, and literally his answer is, uh, you know, maybe there was a point in my career where they could have thrown enough money at me to do that. But now, you know, I, I'm, I'm set. I'm good. I don't need to do that. But the other thing he said was that uh, he's pretty sure that George R.R. Martin has a thing written into his estate will stuff that basically says, like, nobody else is allowed to finish the series. Right. So, uh, yeah, so, so that'll be interesting to see, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, should, should something like that happen, maybe lawyers get involved, whatever. But, uh, but I feel like probably he wants to finish the series, right? Yeah, I think so. And I was, I was browsing YouTube at one point and he, inter him and Stephen King were having a conversation. It was probably three or four years ago. Might've been longer. I can't remember now, but, um, they, you know, George R. R. Martin just asked Stephen King outright, how do you write so much so fast? And I don't, you know, they've got to know this, but I don't think it's a fair question to ask someone who writes in, in most cases, standalone horror, or, you know, he's dabbled in some like, you know, 
hard-boiled detective no- novels, things like that, like sure. that are mostly standalone, and compare that with epic fantasy. I think, you know, it's it's different when you've got the this character-driven, long, expansive universe, basically this world that he's built, and you know, he, he can't just invent a new character or a new area, you know, like. You know, you could do a little bit of that this late in the series, but you're starting to get into the third act of the series and to introduce so much new stuff now sort of defeats the purpose. Your your main goal is to wrap up the series, wrap up the characters, and give us something that doesn't necessarily uh, feel good, but at least satisfies, checks the box of, okay, we know what happened to that character. We know what happened yeah. in this area. We know what how that resolved in this and that. Um so, so how do you write so fast? You know, Stephen King said, if you're not writing four to six hours a day, you're not a serious writer, <laughs> which I think is gatekeeping. But yeah, um, but at the also same just time, mathematically, right? Like uh, there was a um, uh, a thread on Twitter from uh, John Scalzi, and John Scalzi was basically saying, I write one to two hours a day, sure. and that's enough for him to finish a novel and sell it and make a ton of money. So right. it's really down to you know, all of these, like, there's the thing we, we say online, right? Like, if you write, you're a writer. Well, right. Certainly, regardless of what you believe about that, George R.R. R. Martin, who has not written a book in, te- published a book in 10 years, uh, uh, aside from the, those. Wild Gun, what is it? No. So there's Wild Cards, which he's like an editor on, and then, but there's also some of that Song of Ice and Fire, like, ancillary history stuff, which I don't know if it counts yeah. or not. Anyway, but clearly George R.R. R. Martin who has not, you know, published one of those books in 10 years still counts as a writer. Clearly, right. you know, John Scalzi, if he just writes one hour a day and still puts out a novel every year, he's a writer, right? right? So, um, but I think it speaks to write Stephen King's process, right? And I think all of these writers have different processes, just like we have different processes. And I think uh, I think that's the his George R. R. Martin's big challenge, right? I think the thing that has made those books so great is that he sort of started with some seeds and then everything sort of sprouted out and went in all these different directions. And that's the thing that was really successful for him. And uh, to the extent that uh, people were less excited about some things in the, the later books that came out, it was about the fact that he was still kind of building out and building out. And people are like, rain it back in, rain it back in. I've switched from gardening to horses, I guess. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, but you know, that's the challenge, right? If the thing that he's really good at is building things out, you yep. know, how does he ever build to a satisfying conclusion? Right. And, you know, he, he originally agreed to do a trilogy and yeah. it was so wildly successful that he was sort of pushed into doing more books. I'll go back to the Crichton analogy. Like he wanted Jurassic Park to be a book and then he sort of got bullied by the publisher and by bullied, I mean, paid a handsome sum of money to write The Lost World when he never meant to do that. Like, and he had to like revive characters and and, like change the story around. Um, But, you know, I think to a certain extent, there's also series fatigue that can happen to an author. And that's happened to me. Yeah. I was in my world that I built for three years solid. Like I was living and breathing those characters and it's easy up front, right? Cause you're just expanding, like you said, right? Yeah. And you do your best not to paint yourself in a corner, but sometimes you're writing in the dark and you don't know if you're in a corner or not. And so, you know, I think this many thousands of pages into a song of ice and fire, yeah. he can only do so much and then he has a TV show, like take his creative, you know, baby and yeah. grow it to maturity and see how it can fail, in my opinion, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 then he's expected to follow that up. Like maybe he's just leaving some breathing room and getting over that series fatigue that he has yeah. and getting some fresh eyes and fresh look at the series to finish it up. Maybe that's being optimistic. I don't know. Well, my theory, and this might just be from my personal experience, but maybe he has decided that the next book in the series is supposed to be a choose your own adventure. And because of that, it's just it's that's really complicated. You know, one cannot be blamed for taking a long time on something like that. It's very ambitious and uh, visionary is what I would say. And uh, it's entirely possible that that is entirely what's delaying my next book is um, 
it's a it's a short story uh, uh, series. Right? It's just like uh, ten or eleven short stories, and uh, uh, the the what's supposed to be the centerpiece is I had this very specific, very complicated choose your own adventure format, uh, which will be something else for legal reasons later on. Um, Okay. And uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's the the commitment to a structure and to saying this is what I'm going to do and putting down a marker and then having to live up to it, which I think is very yeah. much the probably the George R. R. Martin situation, right? Is that uh, he, you know, whatever uh, uh, whatever his intent for the series is, whether it's you know whether it's outside expectation or his own sense of what he wants to accomplish, right? It's He's got to do a thing, and uh, that's probably got to be daunting, right? Because, you know, you don't want to wait 10 years and put out something, and everybody's like, eh. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. But he's got so many editors and so many, you know, access to so many resources, even though I think he still writes on a, like, 1998 pc or something like that. i think you write yeah i uh, think it's like a dos machine that's not connected to the internet um but he's got access you know he can he can make it work i think um you know we won't know until we know or if you know heaven forbid something happens he doesn't finish the series maybe we never know but yeah. i think that's that's life right life yeah. doesn't you know we we read fiction and we want this nice you know bow wrapping up even if it's an ending we don't like at least it's an ending at least it makes us feel like there's some closure sure. but life is not that you know symmetry is a lie like this like beginning and end and i and i hate to make it that that uh you know depressing at the end of this episode but you know if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen and yeah people are going to be upset i will feel like i'm missing out on something but you know, there's there's not a lack of content these days. There just isn't. And those people who are hoping for that will move on and find something else. And, you know, it'll be what it is in the end. And potentially uh, some of his legacy will be the people he inspires to write after him, right? Exactly. Well, Drew, I appreciate you talking about this. You want to go ahead and pitch your book one more time and we'll wrap it up? Sure. Uh, so uh, Personal Git and the Conspiracy of Days is available now from Amazon and uh, also uh, other stores that just buy the copies from Amazon. Uh, and uh, the next book, Percival Git and the Inevitability of Fire, will be out hopefully sometime next year. And uh, I'm looking forward to sharing that with everybody when it comes out. Awesome. Thanks again, Drew. And we will catch everybody next time. Take care.